the rest of the story. The Spanish conquistadors, the 16th century conquerors of Mexico, were led by Hernando Cortez, a blonde... That's right. Seems he had a fair complexion and light brown hair. It was an advantage for the conquistadors that many of them, including their leader, were fair, which is to say even less like the dark-skinned natives they conquered. The advantage was that the conquered often assumed their conquerors were gods. However... There was one who accompanied the Spanish forces, who served Cortez, whose real name was Drover, but who was referred to by the Spanish commander simply as Mi Morzio, my black. Eventually the soldiers imitating Cortez came to call him El Morzio, as he is remembered to this day. Since he was as black as Cortez was fair, his appearance was equally new and strange to the Mexican natives, and he was outstanding otherwise. Valiant in battle, he continually strode the front lines unarmed. And yet several times wounded, he was never decorated. And when during the capture of the Aztec capital, Mexico City, El Morzio saved Cortez's life, he received what? His freedom? No, merely a pat on the back. Now, the conquistadors were headed for Honduras in search of new conquests and more treasure. El Morzillo never made it. Within a hundred miles of the coast, Cortez and twenty soldiers took a side trip to a lake island inhabited by friendly Maya natives. Cortez himself describes what happened there in a letter to the Emperor of Spain. Quote, My black got a splinter in his foot and was unable to go on. The chief promised to cure it, but I do not know what he will do with him, end quote. Indeed, Cortez would never know. But nearly 200 years later, in the dawning 18th century, a band of Franciscan missionaries reached the Mayan village where El Morzillo had been abandoned. The Mayas were still friendly, and they greeted these new European visitors with the same hospitality they had demonstrated toward Cortez and his soldiers, but when the missionaries were taken to the Mayan temple, an enormous structure that could hold a thousand worshippers, the first thing they beheld, standing at the center of the ancient sanctuary and towering high above them, was a gigantic stone idol, a statue of one whom the natives called Tsimenchak, the mighty god of thunder and lightning, and, yes, it was the likeness of El Morzio. Then the Mayas explained their tradition of almost two centuries, that once upon a time the Black One had come to their village attended by twenty-one fair-skinned men. And because the locals had never seen the like of him before, he was presumed a deity and was served accordingly until his spirit had passed from this earth. Of course, you know what really happened. El Morzillo's luck had changed. Because after years of service to the leader of the conquistadors, the tables had turned and the servant was made a god. For the black one, the first of his kind ever seen by the Mayas, who had traveled some 2,000 miles with Hernando Cortez on his back, was Cortez's gallant, wonderful warrior horse. Only now you know the rest of the story.